when an artist paints about war, they introduce something that a phot photograph or a film can never do, and it's just it's just a different medium. It's, it, it, for a start, they can use their imagination, and they can produce something that's really powerful. But I think it's it's not easy to to say why an artist should be chosen. It's just that an art oil painting is something that a camera or a computer can never reproduced. It's just something that's totally unique. Man's inhumanity to man. That's how Peter Housen sees his recent work, and he believes that's why he's been chosen. But for a painter used to mingling with the stars who buy his work, like Bob Geldof, Robbie Coltrane, and Madonna, life in the Bosnian war zone will be very different. Peter will spend a month with British troops in Bosnia. He won't actually set up his easel in the firing line. He'll make sketches, then paint when he's back in Glasgow. His work will then go on display in the Imperial War Museum in London. Before I became a war artist, I was interested in war art all the time, and I was particularly influenced by um, Goya and Otto Dix and um, all the British war artists like Paul Nash and people like that just interested in war. I've been painting wars or drawing wars since I was about three years old. So and the first thing I ever did was a, a battle scene when I was about three uh, with people getting arrows in their eyes and things like that and kind of shot and you know, just lots of violence. I've always been interested in that for some reason. I believe that the best art comes out of maybe not extreme violence but extreme trauma. It's just, I mean, I think if the world was a perfect place, you wouldn't have anything to paint about, basically, you know, you'd, there'd be nothing there to paint about. So it's actually life, I mean, the whole of life is part of, it, it, the whole of life is about uh, violence and um, confrontation and everything. It's just, that's, that's life to me, and it's the way I see things. When I go to paint about war and go to these countries, it's, it's something that interests me and something that I want to do. It's, it's not that I like war or feel good about being in a war. It's just something that makes me live. It makes me feel alive. And it also creates, for me, my, my greatest inspiration because the, it's just such a... Uh, well, I'd rather not paint flowers. I'd, I'd rather, or, or just ordinary kind of cottages in the countryside. I'd, I've, I've always been interested, drawn to to violence, and I think it creates the best out of me anyway. P powerful war art for me is just about telling the truth and about painting about what, what actually happens in a war situation. It's not just about, for me, I'm not really particularly interested in painting about the um, troops of the British Army. I mean, I'm not really interested in that so much. I'm not interested in the technical details of tanks or, or helicopters. I'm interested in refugees and people and terrible things that happen in war. But the, the reason why they, they choose artists to go to these places is simply because the artists can capture something that the camera can't. And that's the main thing. And also, an artist has a license to use their imagination, which is very important as well. So we can actually compose something. We can actually make something different, even though there's still a truth there. But it becomes more of a truth because it's a painting. So it cuts through all the rubbish and get straight to the point. It's just, it's, uh, I mean, painting is, is just something that lasts, I think, and it, it makes people think. Um, when I had the show at the Imperial War Museum, most of the people that went there were school children. And rather than being shocked or whatever, or, or apathetic towards it, they were completely bowled over by it, and they were interested in talking about it. And it has a big effect on people, I think, when you show them paintings of war. It's just not a normal subject. Whenever I say I'm a war artist, people don't really understand what I'm talking about. But traumatic situations, I, mean, I think I'm addicted to kind of trauma anyway. I think I'm a, it, I have to have trauma in my life to create painting. Otherwise, I just would paint flowers for the rest of my life and do, and you know, I might as well sit in the back garden and kind of just uh, fade away. I suppose I have to have trauma all the time. Although that causes problems personally, you know, with personal things, but it's still the way I am. And I was interested in Bosnia since about 91. 
um, and I, I was following it on the news all the time and I decided I wanted to go but it wasn't for a couple of years after the fighting had been on that I actually decided that I really wanted to apply for the job as war artist um, but the impressions I got on the television were it was the it was a very medieval war um, um, and hand to hand fighting a lot of the time and a, a terrible war I mean civil wars I think are the worst wars anyway um, so it attracted me I don't know I can't really explain what attracted me to going to Bosnia but it was something in me that wanted to see what was going on. The commission for the war artist was done through the Imperial War Museum and I had to apply. I thought I could just go up to them and say I want to go and they'd let me go, but they said there was 10 other artists that were interested. So I had to go on a 10 kind of artist shortlist and um, went for an interview and everything. But luckily I, I got it. I think I just scraped by just, but I was really chuffed about it. But the selection panel was I think it was about five people that selected and voted and I think I got there by one vote, something like that. So I was quite lucky really to go. But I think I would have gone anyway. Even if I had been official, I would have gone. The, the pressure, preparations for going to Bosnia were um, not much really. I didn't really do much. I, I, I had this kind of just fantastic excitement about going and I didn't bother to really think about what to get and what to, I, mean, I bought a few um, I bought a sleeping bag and I bought uh, gloves and warm clothes and all that kind of stuff but I didn't really think about the proper preparations especially not mentally I didn't mentally prepare myself for going and um, I, I was just desperate to go I mean I didn't sleep for weeks and weeks thinking about going I was just so excited about going so it just seemed like something that I'd I'd always wanted to do. I was just too excited. I remember the night before I went, I stayed in the RAF base at Bryce Norton, and I couldn't sleep, I winked there. Just the excitement. And then I was just about to get on the plane, they said I couldn't travel because there was explosives on board and I didn't have um, permission. I had to, the only person I could get permission was the chief of staff. This was five in the morning. So I had to get someone from the Times to ring up the chief of staff at five in the morning just to get his permission to go. Um, the insurance was a nightmare as well. But nothing prepares you for going to a place like, like Bosnia. It's just when you get there, the reality hits you, I suppose. My preconceived ideas about Bosnia were all completely rubbish when I got there. I just felt, as soon as I stepped off the plane, I knew that I wasn't prepared. And suddenly the reality hit me when I saw, saw the I mean, within minutes, it suddenly hit me that I wasn't, I wasn't mentally prepared for it at all. And um, the first night in Bosnia, um, I was pretty, felt kind of lonely, I suppose, and quite kind of homesick in a way, I suppose, already. I just felt kind of frightened. As soon as I got there, I felt frightened. Um, and. I suppose quite depressed almost. Instead of um, actually keeping me maybe in the base for a couple of days to acclimatize myself, they moved me straight into the war zone um, immediately the next day. And um, the, I mean, nothing can prepare you for that, just to go straight into a war zone, never, never having been in one before and seeing dead bodies and things like that. So um, immediately I was traumatized but I suppose that's good for the art I mean at the same time I was taking it all in and I was I wasn't actually sketching on the spot uh, because there was too many snipers about firing and so I didn't actually do any sketches but everything went into my head you know everything I saw I memorized I've got a kind of photographic memory I suppose for everything every every small detail um, but they, the army do drove me about in a tank most of the time or in a Land Rover out with the soldiers and um, I felt very detached and I felt quite, I didn't feel a soldier, I didn't feel a journalist, and I didn't feel, almost at one point didn't feel an artist, I just didn't feel really anything at the time. But I just knew that all this information was going into me, all the, all the things I was seeing, all the ethnic cleansing and the refugees and the children. I think I was the only one that was showing my 
my emotions because soldiers keep, keep them hidden in. I suppose the image that sticks by me most about Bosnia was one day a family arrived at the camp uh, and they had all the, the entire community had been wiped out and they'd managed to escape and they were, the camp was in the middle of Croatian territory and they were Muslims and so they were being sniped at as they were outside the camp and the British army wouldn't let them into the camp so they made them stay outside and these people were so frightened it was just to see the fear in their in their faces and they, it was I think there was about six of them and they were just desperate to get some kind of safe to some area of safety and the army wouldn't let them in it was just a, one of those things I don't know what maybe against regulations or whatever but they wouldn't let them in so they stayed there the whole day and the army and the people that was with tried to make me draw them and I couldn't draw them um, as they were doing that because I didn't th think it was the right thing to do so I just but it did it did have a, ma a big impression I mean I did a painting of them um, called cleansed which the Imperial War Museum bought but um, eventually they were uh, the army told them that there was going to be a convoy of tanks going along the road and they were to run beside the tanks so they didn't get killed and they had to run. I saw these old ladies running along the road with all their bags and everything. It was quite an incredible experience to see. Just to, and they eventually got to safety, I think. But that was one major impression. The other thing, I suppose, was seeing a, a, a mortared um, coach that, um, and just seeing uh, bodies lying about the place and people with their brains coming out of their heads and things like that, you know, just everything was... Uh, and the army expected me to draw that as well, but I couldn't do that either, so it was just a weird situation. I don't know if the army actually knew what I was there for or what, if they thought I was just going to paint and draw everything. It was two things, they either thought that I, I would paint pictures of them or I would just paint pictures of do a kind of recorder of it, all the bodies that I saw and everything. So I don't really know if they were briefed enough about the thing. It was just a, just one of those situations that is quite causes a lot of friction, really. I suppose because that must have been a liability to them as well, being kind of frightened as well as being wanting to do it as well. I, I was very frightened uh, about 90% of the time for my for my safety, and I felt quite cowardly about it. But I couldn't kind of changed my emotions. I just felt kind of frightened all the time. I remember the second day we were out, the four bullets came through that came very close to us and that freaked me out quite a lot. And I was being filmed, of course, at the time by a camera crew and that, that was quite, uh, they put me in a lot of situations I didn't really want to be in as well. Just filming me in the middle of battle zones and all that it was like being coming down on an alien spaceship and landing in the middle of a battle zone, and because of the UN, the, the two sides aren't meant to fire at you, so it means that you're in the middle of a battle and you're relatively safe except for a few stray rounds going across or the the odd stray stray explosion. But it was just incredible to watch hand-to-hand -hand fighting going on just a few yards away, with all these men crawling about with guns and. Uh, people throwing hand grenades and it was quite incredible to see it. It was in a place called Travnik, I remember, the, remember it very well, it has, it's still in my memory very clearly. I remember one day also going out to um, uh, collect some refugees from Serb territory and they were, they were mostly rape victims, it was all women and children, I think the men had all been killed and they were all traumatized and obviously just completely completely demoralized about everything and it was that point that I lost my fear I think of myself my own safety so that was one time I, I felt that I'd conquered my fear I still understood that I was frightened but I didn't really I kind of conquered it in a way I suppose and I started to not think about myself anymore and think about actually get involved with the people the first time I went to Bosnia, I didn't really want to even be there, I suppose. I just changed my mind about everything. I didn't really even want to be an artist when I got back. I couldn't paint for about six months. The reason why I couldn't paint or draw when I was in Bosnia 
Well, there was two reasons, I suppose. Um, firstly, I didn't want to paint refugees because they were upset enough, and I didn't want to take away what what they had, what they still had left, any kind of dignity or whatever. Um, I just felt shy about doing it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't photograph them or anything. I just didn't want to draw them. I just wanted to really stand back and not get too involved and just observe what was going on and get ideas. I didn't draw also because every time I took a sketchbook out and stood in a place to draw, people started shooting at me over it and it was quite difficult to do that. The second, I mean the third thing I suppose was I, I um, kind of lost interest in art for a while while I was over there. I didn't really, all I was, all I was doing was just soaking up the experience and being kind of hypersensitive to everything. Everything was affecting me and I couldn't, I suppose I couldn't understand why no one else was cracking up, you know, except for me. I found out later that everyone was cracking up but they were doing it secretly. Not that even the sergeant major was going to the psychiatrist every night and things like that. So it, was, it does affect people, I suppose, in different ways. But for me able to, to be able to paint pictures when I got back, I had, to, I had to really do what I did and just not kind of keep everything into myself. I had to actually show my emotions. When I came back from Bosnia, it took me about six months to even start to paint again. I just couldn't do anything. I was in a kind of complete depression when I got back and uh, um, I really just basically sat about, did nothing. Couldn't find any inspiration really. Everything was still going through me. It was only about after six months that I was able to rationalise uh, what I was doing and you know what kind of work I was going to do. started off pretty badly. I just did a lot of bad paintings. Um, and the crunch, I suppose, was when um, I uh, had to get a friend to lock me in the studio, basically, and force me to work. That was the only way I could do it. So I got locked in the studio for about two weeks with a chain around my neck and just had to paint. So I did about 20 paintings in two weeks. And I started off the rape painting and the ethnic cleansing painting. I did everything, basically. Um, I started off all the major work, I suppose, in that two weeks. And, and as soon as I started it, I started feeling better. It's almost like a kind of therapeutic thing really for me. So at, at the end of the, at, at, by the time the exhibition came up um, at the Imperial War Museum, I'd done about 300 pieces. So I'd really completely, I suppose, cleansed myself of everything that was inside me. So I felt better. Bosnia changed me as an artist because it brought me back into it changed my style for a start, gave me fantastic new ideas and inspiration. It's quite selfish in a way. I mean, that's the, the way it is, I suppose. It's just a, that's the dichotomy of art, is that, is that to go to a place like Bosnia and, and paint is quite a selfish thing to do in some ways, but it also helps other people, I suppose, and it certainly helped me to, to paint about it. But changing me as an artist, it gave me a new style. It made me start painting again, experimenting again. And it made me, it just gave me a complete new lease of life as an artist. It created a, a whole new series of paintings for me and it actually saved me as an artist. I think I would have gone downhill if I hadn't gone there. Personally, it changed me. I, people say I haven't changed, but my marriage went down the drain and, um, you know, I, my family all kind of lost everything really. As personally, I lost everything, um, which was a kind of sacrifice that. I couldn't not not make. I suppose you know it's, I had to. I had to choose the, to either be unhappy for the rest of my life or to continue as an artist and be happy and not see my family as often. But as a person, I think it changed me. Also, it made me kind of care about things a bit more and not be so selfish. When when I first heard about Kosovo. Um, the war in Kosovo and what was happening, it suddenly brought the whole thing back to me at Bosnia and I wanted to go back. I mean, against the wishes of everyone that, that, that knew me or, you know, friends or whatever, that, that didn't want me to go back. And they just thought it was crazy to go back, but I wanted to go back. And I can't really explain why. I just, well, I suppose I can try and explain why it was to do with just, 
again, inspiration for my work and the idea of when, when you're over in a place like this, you, f you live for the moment and you feel really alive. You know, when I'm in my studio in Glasgow, I feel good when I'm painting, but you don't get that kind of adrenaline, not that I'm an adrenaline kind of freak or anything like that. It's just that uh, I do feel more alive when, when I'm over in these places and I like camping rough and I like kind of, you know, I, I like just being in places like that. I like meeting people now, you know, and I like, um, there's a lot of good people I met in Albania and a, a lot of terrible people as well, but the, the good people make up for the really awful people, I think. Edim Edinburgh Direct Aid was a charity that I'd always been interested in. I'd never done anything, I suppose, for them, and I thought it would be a good way to getting to um, Albania and Kosovo, because I knew that they were going to be delivering something, so I asked if they would take me on one of their convoys. So. Um, Basically, I just approached them and they put me on a convoy with about 20 lorries this year. And that, that trip was just incredible because the lorry drivers had never done it before. They were all professional lorry drivers, really good. good. I really enjoyed their company, but they'd never been before. And when we got through to Albania, just amazing, just the whole... Th we were trapped for 48 hours at the border. And th at that point, the Mafia and the Albanian Mafia were trying to steal the load and there was people threatening us with axes and things like that. I mean, one of the paintings that I'm doing at the moment is of the axe man, this crazy character that told us not to sleep at night while we were in the lorries and everything. So it was just a, cr a mad trip, but we delivered most of the aid in the end. We uh, had about 20 lorries, I think it was 20 lorries. We Stuff like Scott's porridge oats and and, and, there was, and pallets and pallets of clothes and tins of beans and kind of flour and water and medical supplies, everything. It was incredible to see the the amount of refugees in Kosovo, in Albania rather, that were just wandering about aimlessly in the hills and they were just sleeping rough. Desper a lot of them were desperate to try and get through. Uh, from one village to another village, and there was, you know, just um, just people walking about, really. A bit like Bosnia, the same as Bosnia in some ways. When I came back from Kosovo, my main um, inspiration, I suppose, was even though I'm interested in refugees, it wasn't actually the refugees uh, first that I wanted to paint. I wanted to just paint about all the brutality that I saw through the the, the mafia and through the the militia over there. And the refugees actually mean an incredible amount to see them, but they come later on. It's really to get my immediate sort of um, thoughts out, I suppose. I mean, the people that, to be honest with you, the people that, the people that affected me, I suppose, I had a bigger impression on me with the thugs over there. Um, that's just a very, very immediate thing. I mean, we went to, we saw thousands and thousands of refugees over there living in terrible conditions, but they, I paint about them later after I've done my main, kind of got out all my, I don't know, frustration, I suppose, about portraying these people as they are. In Kosovo or Bosnia, I've never made any judgments about anyone, the, the, all the, the there's just good and bad in every kind of, I didn't make any politically, I mean, I didn't, I don't blame anyone really. I'm, uh, it's, it's not really my job to do that. That's just propaganda really, I suppose, if I was to actually blame one side. So it's not really that, that I'm interested in. It's mainly just the, the humanity, I suppose, that it just the, it's nothing to do with judgments. The only judgments I make are against certain individuals, I suppose, but not actual countries or nations. After being in Kosovo, I've got certain things I've got to do. I've got to do all the Kosovo work, all the work inspired from everything I saw in Kosovo. I'm, st I'm doing a series of tiger paintings from India when I was in India. Um, I'm doing a series of nudes. I'm doing a series of just ordinary paintings as well of different uh, 
imaginative subjects. I'm doing about four different things at the moment. I'm doing portrait commissions as well. So it's quite a mixture of things. Bosnia and Kosovo are places that do still give me nightmares. I don't get as many about Bosnia now because it's gone through me, but Kosovo, my main nightmare was, um, I suppose, being chased into the hills and having to hide from soldiers. And um, sometimes in the nightmare I get caught and sometimes I don't, but I'm always, I always wake up just before I get killed in it.